Okay, so we're on, uh, we're on slide six. I think the agenda speaks for itself. Um, again, we have proposals, we have sponsor requests, and we have a backlog. Um, today we'll be hearing from TIKB, uh, but as somebody associated with Corsex, I feel no shame in requesting a second sponsor. I believe that Ken has offered to be a sponsor for the project, having spoken to the team. And I don't know if Brian Cantrill is on or was able to speak to them, but I think he may uh, be able to act on their behalf. Uh, otherwise, hey. I'll have to tell the team to go find someone else. Hey, Alexis. Yeah, I intend to do that. Th their availability is limited by time zone. So in my availability is really bad in the morning right now. So we're just trying to find a time to, to talk. Okay. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate that. Um, cool. And Open Metrics and um, Harbor are okay. So that means that we can go straight into the TIKB presentation. Um, do we have Ed and Kevin available? Hey. hey, Alexis, this is Kevin. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Um, as I was saying on Twitter, you know, uh, open source is a global phenomenon. I saw you were talking about that. So Indeed, we uh, hopefully represent a part of that globe <laughs> with this presentation. Well, good luck. All right, so uh, I guess I'll share my screen and launch this slide for everyone. Go for it. Yeah, make sure everyone can see me, share screen. All right, hopefully everyone can see this slide. Yeah, it looks great. Awesome, awesome. Okay, great. So once again, uh, my name is Kevin. Uh, I am from the company Pincap. Uh, I'm their general manager here in North America, and I, along with uh, our co-founder and CTO, Ed Huang, will uh, be presenting Tai KB to everyone. Thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you for not watching the World Cup and listening to us at this very moment. Uh, very excited to be presenting this open source distributed transactional key value store for everyone to consider uh, for CNCF. And a quick... Here, let me see. All right, so a quick agenda for today's presentation. I will go through a history and a community update for TaiKV, a fairly detailed walkthrough of the technical and architectural aspect of TaiKV, uh, a use case with Ulama, which is one of the largest uh, food delivery platform in China right now, uh, serving more than uh, 260 million users. And they're using TaiKV right now to serve about 80% of their in-production traffic. Uh, if we have time, I will also do a quick demo on my laptop to give you a little bit of a feel of how to spin up a TaiKV cluster on your laptop. And when we have time, uh, happy to take any questions uh, from everyone on the call. So a quick history about PINCAP. It was founded in uh, April of 2015 by three infrastructure engineers who were working in some of the largest internet companies in China, like NetEase and JD.com. Ed was, uh, of course, one of them. And we set out to build the TaiDB platform. Tai for your curiosity just stands for titanium. There are several components to the TaiDB platform. One is TaiDB itself, which is actually a stateless SQL layer that is MySQL compatible. The focus of today's presentation is TaiKV, which is a distributed transactional key value storage layer. We also built something called TaiSpark recently. That is a Spark plugin that also talks directly to TaiKV to help a lot of our users process more complex analytical queries. Uh, last but not least, we also have a project called Placement Driver, which is a cluster that does the metadata storage layer that communicates with TaiKV to do scheduling, uh, auto balancing, and also timestamp allocation. TaiKV, the project, was open source a little over two years ago uh, on April 2016. Its current version is 2.0. Its license is uh, Apache 2.0. And here is the link uh, for you to check out the repo. Uh, in terms of the community progress, so TaiDB as a whole is actually one of probably the most popular, active, uh, open source database project out there. Uh, it has more than 13,500 stars. Uh, TaiKV itself has more than 3,300 stars with uh, 70 plus contributors and roughly around 3,000 commits right now. 
We also have the benefit of enjoying contribution from a lot of outside institutional contributors from other companies uh, like Samsung, like Mobike, which is one of the largest uh, bike sharing platforms uh, out there, as well as uh, folks like Total.com, which is one of the largest tech companies in China with a super popular news aggregator app. The whole company is valued around $20 billion uh, right now, uh, as well as two public cloud vendors like Tencent Cloud and uCloud. And the big pain point that we wanted to address to build TaiKV is to have a open source uh, distributed storage layer that can unify a lot of the disparate data that has been stored right now in multiple different kinds of database solutions, but have a layer that supports strong consistency, that really supports distributed transaction with asset compliance, that can be easily scaled horizontally in either direction, and of course has a cloud native architecture. That was, of course, uh, a lot of what drew people's interest with the Google Spanner project. Uh, that is also where we got our original inspiration from for TaiKV as well. But unfortunately, Spanner isn't open source and isn't so accessible. And our vision for TaiKV is to build a building block for other cool, amazing, powerful systems to be built on top of it. So far, we built TaiDB and TaiSpark ourselves. Uh, Total has built their own metadata service on top of their S3 implementation. And the Ulema, which I will go into in more detail, actually built their own Redis proxy on top of TaiKV. So now I will do a dive into the technical architecture of TaiKV. As I mentioned, uh, TaiKV currently lives within uh, the whole TaiDB platform among many, uh, a few different other components. But the focus of today's presentation will be in this middle red part uh, where all the Thai KV clusters are, where all the data is actually stored and persisted and communicates with the placement driver cluster. Here is a layout of the Thai KV uh, architecture. So Thai KV, the component, uses gRPC to communicate with uh, the placement driver as well as any client that can be built on top of it. It exposes two kinds of API. One is a raw uh, key value API. One is a coprocessor API that facilitates a push down computation. It uses the RAV consensus protocol to provide data replication and high availability. And underneath each Thai KV instance, uh, you can essentially imagine each instance as one single machine. We also have a RocksDB instance uh, where we leverage that community uh, for the, uh, as our storage engine for Thai KV. And here are some of the technical highlights of TaiKV. As I mentioned, it does scheduling and auto balancing. We also have a multi raft implementation because uh, each TaiKV node has several, um, actually oftentimes many different raft groups that are replicated across different TaiKV nodes. So each TaiKV node has multiple raft groups that it has to facilitate the communication between uh, different TaiKV nodes. Uh, we also have a dynamic range-based partitioning uh, feature that allows these RAF group to be split, merged, or the leaders can be automatically transferred in order to remove and resolve hotspots. Uh, the way we uh, implement asset transaction is through a two-phase commit with uh, optimistic lock. And TaiKV is written entirely in Rust, which is a relatively new systems level language that is gaining a lot of traction and adoption. And the nice thing about Rust, as many of you may know, is that it does not have GC stop time or a lot of runtime cost. In fact, I think TaiKV is one of the largest uh, Rust uh, in production project out there, aside from, of course, Firefox. Here is one example where SQL can be realized on top of uh, TaiKV using TaiDB, which is what we built um, internally, well, with the community as well. So the way it works with TaiDB is that TaiDB actually has several layers uh, that we built ourselves with a MySQL compatible layer, a parser, a, a cost-based optimizer, and a coprocessor distributed executor API that talks directly to TaiKV nodes. 
And each of these little color blocks are uh, basically RAF groups that are in the same group, and they are evenly distributed across multiple uh, Thai KV uh, nodes and replicated for high availability. And the way we map uh, a relational table to a key value pair is essentially we have a encoding system that maps the key and the value, uh, or actually the, the, the IDs and the indexes of each row of data into key value storage uh, pairs that can be essentially imagined or uh, visualized as a giant sorted map uh, that are broken down again into multiple smaller chunks that are replicated using a raft. And all the keys here are sorted according to their byte array order. And we did that intentionally in order to support useful operations like scan. And this is a pretty important difference comparing Thai KV to say some of the other, other similar projects like Yugabyte, for example, which I believe uses hash to generate these keys and therefore cannot support things like scan. And sorry about the mix up with the graphic, but here is a uh, visual representation of how the coprocessor works. So what essentially happens is that when TiDB receives a SQL query, uh, it will go through the parser to break down uh, each of the query into different physical plans and uh, partial and each of the uh, the plan, the partial aspect of the plan are actually pushed down into multiple Thai KV nodes simultaneously where all the computation is actually done inside Thai KV nodes at the same time to compute partial results for a particular query. These partial results are again returned back to TiDB and TiDB does the uh, final reassembling of all the partial results that can be sent back to the client. And this is an implementation that we worked on a lot to be able to take advantage of the distributed nature of Thai KB and all the computing power that it has uh, access to in order to speed up more and more queries. And in one of our future roadmap plans, we actually plan to uh, support more built-in functions that we can push down into Thai KB nodes as well. Here's another example of how Thai KV is being uh, used so far. I alluded to this a little earlier, which is how Total.com uh, uses uh, Thai KV. Uh, they have their own S3 implementation. Uh, they have a bunch of S3 buckets with a lot of blob storage, and they are also using Thai KV as their metadata storage uh, uh, right now for their in production mode. And here is the latest benchmark, the YCSB benchmark that we did just last month. And here is the environment and the hardware that we use to do this benchmark. And you can see the insert TPS result as well as the read QPS result here. Uh, one thing to note is that this is a standard default three Thai KV node uh, deployment. And, uh, you know, of course, in a actual in production environment, most of our users deploy way more than three Thai KV nodes to store more data to increase their capacity. So, uh, you know, this kind of this result will be much better. And I think the throughput will be much higher in even an in production uh, environment. But this is the uh, uh, the benchmark that we did last month for Thai KV. Oops. Here is a quick overview comparison between Thai KV and some of the other uh, popular NoSQL databases out there. Of course, every single database tries to solve different problems in different ways using different technology. So not everything can be compared in a completely apple to apple sort of a way but Thai KV's uh, original uh, and still the current goal is to first and foremost support distributed transaction uh, that has strong consistency. And that is uh, the, the sort of the, the, the first goal and the first level priority that Thai KV uh, looks to uh, support, uh, which is different from some of the other NoSQL databases out there. 
here is a visual overview of one of the features that I mentioned before, which is uh, dynamic splitting and merging. Uh, as many of you know, uh, RAF groups and RAF uh, regions can get quite big. And as the RAF region gets big, uh, it could form a lot of hotspots and provide perf and produce performance issues. And one thing that Thai KV can do on its own is that if a region, say here in region A, gets too big, and by big, currently we are defaulted to mean 96 megabytes. Of course, that can be configured depending on your usage, but if it gets larger than 96 megabytes, we will automatically split that region into two regions and put them in different high KV nodes. And the reverse is true as well if a region is too small, and that is currently defined as 10 megabytes then we will look for the closest adjacent region uh, and then merge those two together into one larger region uh, to uh, you know, improve the performance of that region. And here is another visual illustration of a uh, core feature, which is automatic hotspot removal. Uh, one of the best use cases for Thai KV and Thai DB as a whole is if your access mode uh, doesn't have hotspots or wants to avoid hotspots, uh, Thai KV is a great solution for that. And the way that's being done is if uh, you know several regions uh, where the leader uh, here denoted in blue is in one particular machine, then all the workload is going to all the leaders while the followers are not uh, you know doing a whole lot. And if this is starting to form a hot uh, spot then uh, the system will facilitate an automatic RAF leader transfer where we will do a logical leader transfer uh, here in region B to move the leader from the first machine to the second machine. And there's no actual data movement here. It's just a transfer of leader within the RAF consensus protocol. Then we will have the workload split uh, onto two different machines uh, and thus the hotspot is removed. And to go a little bit uh, over our cloud native integration and progress, like I mentioned, we've always uh, imagined and built TaiKV to be having a cloud native architecture that works closely with Kubernetes uh, to be integrated in all kinds of cloud deployment uh, scenarios. Currently, uh, TaiKV is integrated with Tencent Cloud and uCloud. And most recently, uh, we are also got on JD. Uh, dot com's cloud uh, provider or cloud uh, solution. And of course, in the future, we look to integrate uh, with all the major cloud vendors, uh, you know, all over the world. And as far as cloud native synergy is concerned with other uh, components, Currently, we have a Docker Compose deployment for testing and development on local machine, which will be part of my demo. Uh, we have a tool called TidyB Operators uh, that works closely with Kubernetes to help uh, deploy TidyB in all uh, different public or private cloud scenarios. And we will actually soon be open sourcing this TidyB Operator tool as well. Uh, we, of course, use Prometheus and gRPC in our standard deployment. We, our team is actually one of the largest uh, maintainer of uh, the Rust implementation for both Prometheus and gRPC. And we also use a lot of etcd and is an active contributor to ETCD uh, because we have really been leveraging ETCD since day one uh, when we started building Thai KV because it had a very mature RAF implementation and also a very rigorous testing uh, regimen that we uh, really leveraged. And uh, we didn't fork it completely because we wrote uh, Thai KV in Rust. So we kind of have our own Rust implementation of ETCD but we are uh, active contributors of the ETCD community. We do a lot of bug fixes, and we are also leading the charge in uh, forming features, uh, new features like the RAP learner. A quick overview of Thai KV's usage. Uh, currently, there's about 200 companies, uh, give or take, that are using Thai KV in production right now. A lot of them are using TaiKV in uh, combination with other components like TaiDB and TaiSpark, but quite a few companies are using TaiKV by itself. 
And one of those companies that I want to talk about is Olama, which, like I mentioned, is a food delivery platform with uh, 260 million users. So it's bigger than a lot of the perhaps more well-known food delivery platforms that we hear here in North America and Europe all combined. It was recently acquired by Alibaba for 9.5 billion US dollars. And the problem or the pain point that they were facing is they had a lot of data in key value formats and they were using a hodgepodge of uh, different solutions like Mongo, Cassandra, and Redis. Uh, and they were looking for a solution that can really unify all these different data sources into one. And they found the TaiKV and deployed TaiKV as this unifying storage layer, which currently is uh, serving and affecting about 80% of the entire platform's traffic. Uh, TaiKV is currently holding more than 25 terabytes of data spread across four different data centers uh, for Ulama. And what's really interesting is that Ulama built their own Redis a layer on top of TaiKV because they wanted to continue using Redis. A lot of the application developers love using Redis. Uh, so that's what they did to make TaiKV work for them. And if you're interested in digging deeper into how they use TaiKV, we recently published a use case uh, story written by uh, Ulama's engineers uh, that you can look at via this link. All right, so I've done a lot of talking, uh, blah, blah, blah. And uh, if we have time, I will do a quick demo of how to spin up a TidyB cluster on your laptop. And the context of this demo is to show you, number one, how easy it is to deploy TidyB. Uh, right now, uh, I already downloaded or get cloned a um, TidyB cluster repo on my laptop. So I'm deploying it right now using Docker Compose. And as you can see, Prometheus is installed by default. And so are three standard TaiKV nodes right here. And what I will do now is um, spin up a MySQL cluster as well as a Spark cluster uh, so that you can see how TaiKV can be the underneath storage layer to facilitate both uh, components talking to each other and reading from the same data source. Uh, but before I do that, I want to show you real quick uh, some monitoring mechanisms. So each of these deployment has a Grafana implementation defaulted to port 3000. And if you log in using just admin admin, again, this is just for testing and development purposes, you can monitor uh, your entire clusters, uh, you know, metrics and current status. If you go into TidyB cluster TaiKV, you can look at the store size, the available size, and things like that. So there's a bunch of stuff that you can play with inside the Grafana implementation. And one more tool which we built in-house is something called TidyB Vision. And this is defaulted to port 8010. And here you have a cool little data visualization tool that has this ring and each of the partial ring is basically one TaiKV node. If you look a little bit deeper in there, you see a bunch of empty blocks. These are just empty storage spaces. The dark green are uh, raft leaders and the dark gray are raft followers. And you can essentially visualize raft as it goes through the entire TaiDB uh, or TaiKV deployment uh, so this is how that works. Now back to terminal, the demo. Uh, what I will do is launch a MySQL uh, instance. So in the interest of time, I will just do a lot of copy and pasting of commands. So launch MySQL. And as you can see, this is uh, TiDB compatible with MySQL. And I will also launch a Spark instance. This will take a little while, so it will let this run. Let's go back to MySQL, and I'll show you what is in here. So show databases. So we have a few databases, and we'll actually use this one called TPCH001 for the demo. It just has a bunch of um, uh, sample data in there. So TPCH001, 
and let's see what's in this database. So it just has a bunch of uh, different tables in here. One of them is called nation, orders, things like that. So let's see what is in nation. All right, just a list of countries with some random information in here. And right now we have our Spark plugin ready. So I am going to input a couple of commands to launch TieSpark, which like I mentioned, is a Spark plugin that works directly on top of Tie KV as well. So these are the two standard uh, TieSpark commands. And last one, we will tie this instance to the same database called TBCH001. So they should be talking to the same data source. And let's just see if that is the case. We'll use SQL again, Spark SQL, select star from nation, oops, show 30. We have the exact same table of uh, country information as the one that we saw on MySQL site. So let's make some edits to this table. Um, since Belgium has such an epic World Cup match yesterday, where it advanced to the next round, we should probably add Belgium to this list of countries. So let's insert Belgium into this table. And if you see that, we have Belgium on the bottom right here, a new, a new member of this country list. And if we do the same command, you will immediately see the change being made and visible on the TieSpark side as well. So you can easily imagine where multiple updates and changes are being made on the MySQL side and the TieSpark side can immediately do queries and uh, analytical processing uh, on the Spark side, all being supported and stored inside Tie KV. All right, so now I'm gonna go back to my slides. And of course, the goal of our presentation is that we would love to have uh, CNCF CF accept Tai KV as either an incubation or a sandbox level project. And with this acceptance and to be part of CNCF, we're looking to build really not just a bigger community, but also something that is more vendor neutral that can help us build this project uh, with better governance, with better structure, and ultimately more contribution to build very useful and important components that uh, really is uh, you know, beyond the strength of the current community right now. Uh, we would love to see more uh, language support. Right now, we only have a Go client for TiDB and a Java client for TiSpark. Uh, one of our community members has already started building an open source Redis proxy. Uh, he called it Titus. So you can check out his repo here. But of course, it's still very much a work in progress. We wanted to support column family structure as well. So there's a lot of things uh, that we would love Tidy, uh, TiKB to have. And with uh, CNCF support, uh, I'm uh, sure we'll be able to accomplish that. So again, thank you for your time. We would love for you to be our TOC sponsor. And of course, reach out to me and Ed anytime if you have any questions. And we will uh, actually be preparing for the technical proposals right now. And we will uh, share that with everyone, uh, hopefully uh, within the next week. So that's about my presentation. I had one quick question, Kevin. On um, the PR, it has sandbox slash incubation. Which one was it going? Incubation or sandbox? So that just depends on the sponsor, I guess. Or yeah, what do you feel like is blocking you from one or the other? I guess. Um, I mean, I think I'm sort of leaving this up to the TOC to give us what you think will be the best, um, I guess, level <laughs> uh, of entry for the current status of the project. Um, you know, given the number of adoption that we've seen so far for Thai KV, um, I think it probably would work for incubation. But then again, uh, you know, I'm not too familiar with the different kind of criteria and what goes into these considerations. So we're being, uh, you know, open and receptive to your uh, opinions about which level is most appropriate.
Hey, Kevin. Um, this is Brian. So, um, one question: have, have you done a Jepson run on Ty DB or Ty KV? I, just googling around, it looks like you've you've done at least some experimentation, but it doesn't look like Kyle has had the opportunity to do a full run. Yes, we've done our own Jepson test, but we haven't done it uh, with Kyle going through his process uh, specifically. Um, and I is, think, yeah, you is might have done it already, right? Is that something that you that, that you're looking to to do? Um, that's definitely something that we're looking to do, and I guess we just haven't quite got around to it. Uh, it's definitely yeah. a process that you know requires some resources from our side as well, but we would definitely love to uh, you know go through that uh, process as well. Um, you know, since our pro own process probably gets us somewhere along that way, but I think having him do it with us is probably you know we're definitely open to doing that, and we're prepared to do that. Yeah, I mean, I would really encourage you to do that. I know, I know it's it's time consuming and it's expensive, both in terms of resources and, and potentially monetarily. But I do think it's really worth doing because it, it Jepson has, I mean, as you know, Jepson has has become the gold standard for actually um, di allowing people to, to understand what the true consistency guarantees are, are of, of these various projects. But this is honestly very impressive, and it looks like you've got a lot of production use. So I think it's, I mean, really exciting project. I mean, I'm actually a bit embarrassed that I had not heard of Ty KV. <laughs> so, um, it's probably our fault, but we're, we're working on fixing that right now. <laughs> well, and I, I think like getting a Jepson run is a good example of something that would get you more visibility in terms of yeah. how it's, in, in, in terms of what it can go to, because this is, Certainly for us and for a lot of people, this is a really interesting, I mean, we, we've got all the same problems that you're seeing um, and the, the, the GC pauses are, are just a, a, a deal breaker for me, um, for any, um, so the, the, and I'm obviously, maybe not in this forum, but aside, very curious with your experiences with Rust. We're having a lot of really good experiences with Rust and um, it's looking like a, a very interesting trajectory. So I'd love to get your take on that as well. But I'd, I would be happy to help uh, to help facilitate you however I can in terms of okay. um, sponsoring what have you. That would be awesome. Thank you so much, Brian. And yeah, consider yeah, it done when it comes to jobs and tests. We'll definitely put that uh, higher on our radar with you. Cool. Yeah. That's great. Really impressive presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions that we can help you with at the moment? So how tightly coupled are uh, Thai KV and Thai DB? Uh, um, so you're, pl you're proposing to donate just Thai KV? That's correct. That's correct. Um, and, uh, as far as being tightly coupled is concerned, um, so Thai DB itself is just a stateless uh, SQL layer. Right, and KV is the layer where all the data is uh, stored and persisted. And we've always designed it that way so the two part can be uh, separated and then used in different ways. So um, right now, of course, given that Thai KV hasn't been so much on its own, uh, the current usage very much is connected to TidyB and you know Thai Spark, depending on what the user is for. But uh, it can be easily adapted, like what the Ulama folks are doing with the Redis proxy, to be uh, used as a building block for really uh, whatever you see fit, right on top of it. So what you see is a uh, an ecosystem of kind of domain specific or use case specific storage layers on top of K, uh, KIDV, yeah, KV, absolutely. like right. the the Redis and SQL and potentially others in the future. Absolutely, yeah. Hey, Chris, my apologies. I got to drop. No worries. Appreciate hey, you. Brian, I actually missed your last question. Can you repeat that, please, Mr. Brian Grant? Uh, yeah, I was asking about the uh, whether they see usage as um, having an ecosystem of domain-specific storage layers or adapters built on top, like Redis, right. SQL, and so on, as opposed to direct use of the KV store by applications. Mm -hmm, I guess yeah. maybe we might see both, but it looks like right now it's more layers on top, like Spark and, and SQL and so on. Um, well, yeah. one can debate about whether Spark is a, a layer or an application itself. But uh, okay. So I, I had a question about the, the region uh, breakup as well. Yeah. So when splitting a region, that then forces transactions to go to a two-phase commit. Is that all happen? Is that correct? Um, in terms of splitting the region, 
So the one I was talking about was uh, more for removing um, kind of a large region for the purpose of uh, performance uh, issue. So what things, I guess, would be put in the same, in, together in the same region? Um, in, in terms of, so this, this, that would just be data that's coming in or kind of encoded from uh, the relational side to KV store, and then they're broken up into different region, mostly by their size. So kind of like in this situation where you can see um, different tables going to key value pairs and then broken down into different regions. And then these regions, I guess, if it gets too big, could be split up uh, just for uh, you know performance purposes or hotspot forming uh, removal. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, maybe, maybe I should, I can follow up with you um, in terms of uh, specifically, uh, are you talking about the transaction kind of getting disrupted by a uh, region split? Uh, I was just trying to understand what some of the um, automation was doing in terms of how regions were structured and what's in the same raft group versus different raft groups. Right. Um, and what the, some of the performance trade-offs were with two-phase commit versus the same raft group. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I mean, in terms of region splitting, I think the main consideration is the size of the region, but also the amount of traffic that this region, assuming that this region is a leader uh, replica uh, for that particular RAF group, uh, then it could get split up into different uh, machines to remove hotspot. That's, that would be like one scenario, I think, where that will get automatically facilitated. Okay, Yeah. Thanks. I have two questions. Yeah. Uh, one is, I think, pretty easy, which is, could you just clarify for everybody exactly what the relationship is with that CD in the past, present, and future? Um, just to so we understand. And, and two is just for just for Q and A, really interested in, you know, if people have issues with uh, Type AV, what is the number one thing they complain about? I see. Gotcha. So. First question first, so for ETCD, right? Um, so like I mentioned, uh, we have been leveraging ETCD since day one because of its uh, RAF implementation. Uh, and also, you know, we really leverage its testing uh, rigor to use it to test our own TIKV system. Uh, we actually use ETCD embedded in our placement driver uh, implementation, so the placement driver cluster uh, directly. But for Thai KV, uh, we because we use RAF, uh, we use Rust to uh, code it. Uh, we uh, didn't fork ETCD completely, but kind of made our own Rust implementation of ETCD uh, in uh, Thai KV. So that's kind of the past and the current. And for the future, we are very involved in the different kind of ETCD. Um, uh, kind of roadmap that's going forward. Uh, one of the things that I mentioned is the RAF learner feature that we are really looking to uh, implement uh, for uh, the next evolution of Thai KV uh, because one of the, um, I guess, drawbacks, and this actually goes into your second question, is because Thai KV is, you know, by nature a key value store, uh, it doesn't uh, quite support. Uh, complex analytical queries and the speed and the performance that say a H base potentially would or any other column family database would. Uh, and that is sort of the inherent uh, uh, structural limitation that Thai KV has in that implementation. Uh, so there is a limit, for example, to how fast our Thai Spark implementation could really go if it sits on top of what Thai KV is now. And you, you can see that as being one of the uh, not so much complaints per se, but at least the uh, consideration or limitations that people use Thai KV for uh, when it comes to analytical processing. But with the RAF learner feature being more mature and being implemented, uh, we can see that as a really good solution to support uh, faster uh, analytical queries to be uh, able to process on top of Thai KV.
awesome presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, yeah, once again, uh, please reach out to us if you have any other follow-ups and uh, we will circulate our proposal uh, very soon. Cool. Hey, Ke Kevin, just a quick question. Uh, which percentage of the maintainers are outside of ping cap right now? Is it, is it just primarily ping cap driven or do you have maintainers from, from other companies? Um, right now, I think in terms of maintainers, it's probably mostly from ping cap. Um, in terms of contributors, uh, you know, our own Thai KB yeah. team isn't um, any, it's probably like less than 15 people uh, and okay. we have like 70 contributors. So. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Just, uh, just one request. If you go ahead and do the incubation route, um, probably start sounding out potential interviewees in your production user base. Cause I think the more we hear from them, the better it is for streamlining the DD process. Got it. Will do. Okay. I actually got to jump, Chris. Could you shepherd the rest of the call, please? I'm really sorry. Yeah, no, we're, we're pretty much uh, closing out. So um, any other questions for, for Kevin before he disappears? All right. Cool. Um, thanks, thank you again. Cool. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate yeah, no worries. Uh, so, uh, not, not too many updates, um, you know, if you just go to slide 37, it's a pointer to the working groups, um, 38 is the project review, uh, 39 is just a reminder that uh, we have a uh, few events uh, upcoming, uh, for this year at least, we have Shanghai and Seattle, if you are interested in submitting uh, a talk to Shanghai, um, the CFP closes at the end of this week. I think it's on the 7th, so please get your um, talks in. You have a little bit more time uh, for Seattle. Uh, other than that, slide 40, our next meeting, um, we'll be hearing from uh, the Falco project from Sysdig on July 17th. Uh, and that's about it. Any other questions before we close? Hey, Chris, it, it closes at midnight on the 6th. So oh, six. Sorry. this is just the, the, the last big shout out. Please consider submitting a talk uh, or multiple talks for KubeCon Shanghai, which is November 14th and 15th. This week is your last time to do it. You can write it out as you're looking at the fireworks tomorrow uh, if you're in the U.S. And um, please encourage the folks in your organization to submit as well. Thanks. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I linked the CFP in the chat. Any other questions uh, from folks? All right. Thanks all and we'll see you in a couple weeks. Take care. You too. Thanks.